Nick, he's right here. Nick coming in hot. <laughs> he's like coming in <sighs> Yo, yo, yo. What is up, guys? Nick Nakai here, Last Drift Media. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button down below. So on today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you some tools that I recommend starting off as an entry-level tech. Say maybe you're in school and you got that Snap-on student discount or something like that and you're looking to buy some tools. Uh, hopefully this guide will kind of show you what you should get started in. And again, this is not gonna be everything you're gonna need. Of course, you're gonna start realizing down the line that you're gonna need more tools and you're gonna start buying more tools, but I figured this will kind of uh, be a nice place to start off so you can at least get an idea and point you in the right direction. Also, I'm going to be drifting at Apple Valley Speedway on November 22nd. It's a Sunday, so if you guys aren't doing anything, you guys wanna come out and have some ride-alongs, have some fun. <laughs> I'll be out there, I uh, got the drift car all ready, so pretty excited guys. So I'll post that link down below so you guys can check it out. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started. I kind of set up the main tools, stuff I use a lot in the service cart. And then over here, I'll go over some other stuff that are important to, important to have, but you don't necessarily need them when starting off. And like I said, you're gonna kind of go along and figure out what you need as you go. So starting on the top, uh, you for sure, Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, definitely gonna be a must, something you're gonna be using a lot. Uh, I'd recommend also a pair of little vice grips. A lot of hydraulic hood chocks are bad working in the dealership, so these are nice to ho hold the hood up. And coming down, we got, of course, just a 3 8 ratchet. It's nice to have one or two to get into different types of spots, depending on what type of job you're doing, as well as a half inch ratchet. I would say it's definitely very essential. Uh, over here on the left, I kind of put the tools for CV axles. You'll be dealing a lot with that since with Toyota there's a lot of front wheel drive vehicles. So we got our 30 mil axle nut socket. Definitely a need. Uh, we have two pairs of CV axle boot clamp pliers. So these are pretty nice to have. Although you don't rebuild CV axles as much at Toyota now but every now and then you're still gonna run into them so I'd say something to have. Well as a stake to stake the CV axle nuts. And going down, uh, 3 8 extensions, a lot of different sizes, really help you out, as well as a 3 8 wobble. So these are just some Harbor Freight 3 8 extensions that I've been running for years and have no problem with, so I really like these ones. Coming down here, we got some adapters, half inch to 3 8 3 8 to half inch. Definitely recommend some magnets, wands, pickup magnets. You're gonna drop nuts and bolts. It's nice to have these to reach down on into something and pick up those lost bolts. Inspection mirrors, checking brakes, just kind of checking behind connectors sometimes, trying to see how they disconnect or trying to just get a better angle of something where you can't necessarily see while you're just looking at it under the hood or under the vehicle. Oxygen sensor, socket, definitely a must. Some kind of plastic pry tools are very helpful. Uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of interior work, so using just like a pocket screwdriver, you can get away with it, but it's a lot easier to damage the interior with that, so it's nice to have a handy set of little plastic pry tools. Uh, air chuck, of course, you should already have this. A lot of these tools, or some of these tools actually, I covered in my video tools for a loop rack or loop technician, so maybe if you wanna check that out first, feel free to check that link down below. But going in the back, we have our sockets. I really only, I would say deep is gonna come in more handy than shallow. That's why I just run the deeps on this rail. And these are the sockets I go to all the time. But you're really just gonna need a 10, 12, 14, 17, and 19. I recommend having the 3 8 wobbles as well. It just really makes your life a lot easier. They can be a little bit pricey, but trust me, they are definitely worth it. 
Also an Allen 10 millimeter and a six millimeter. I mean, usually they come in whole sets, but these are really the main two that you're gonna actually be using on Toyotas for the transmission drain plugs. So those are very nice. Um, sockets half inch, usually the big boys, uh, 24, 22, 21, 19, 17, now it's kind of really all you need. You don't really need the 14 and the 12, but like I said, most socket sets come in big sets anyways, so those are just the socket sizes that you're gonna really be using. If you can afford the wobble sockets, go for it. Like I said, these wobble sockets really make a big difference, especially in those tight to reach areas. But um, for the longest time, I didn't have any wobble sockets. I just used my sockets with this little wobble. Kind of made my own wobble sockets, but I really do recommend the wobbles. Half inch and half inch extension, short one and a long one. For the most part, you're pretty good with that. I've been fine with that. Uh, just stack them together if it's somewhere harder to reach. But I mean, they're Toyotas, so really a lot of things on Toyota are pretty simple and easy to get to. Flashlight is a must for sure. Recommend at least buying one nice spotlight. You can see what you're looking at doing inspections or under a dash but the spotlights are cool but i think the wand light comes in handy a lot more because you could just set it somewhere wherever you want to put it under the car and usually you're working with both hands so it's kind of hold, hard to hold a little stream light like this and work on the car at the same time some people put them in their mouth or by their ear and kind of hold it all stupid but it's not that fun 1412 long combo wrench. If you're on the loop rack, you probably already have one of these, but just a great tool at Toyota. Little handy dandy nut grabber. Again, really nice when you're dropping your nuts and you gotta go pick something up. Just comes in really handy, as well as the magnets. Put that over here. And that's most of the stuff in the top. On the side here, I just have a really long, cheapy screwdriver. I kind of use this when checking for like engine noises to like put it on somewhere. And then you can put your ear on it to kind of get a feel for what's going on, kind of like a stethoscope. It's kind of an old school trick I learned. Long flathead screwdriver. This thing's really nice. I use it like a pry bar a lot of the times. Comes in handy, also works as a punch. Again, at Harbor Freight. Panel poppers. These come in handy a lot. Doing door panels anytime. You can just yank on the door panel and pull it off, but a lot of times these can just slide right in and pop the clips out. Or if you get a clip stuck in the, the door or whatever you're working on, you can pop it out really nice without damaging it. So I really recommend a set of those. I got this whole set. I actually lost one of them. Kind of sucks, but definitely very helpful. It also came with this pick. It's really nice. Say you're like trying to fish a wire out or something or pull a harness or pull anything really. This thing really comes in handy. It also helps like if you can't reach a connector somewhere, kind of go in there and do your thing. Impact gun, half inch, definitely a necessity. It doesn't have to be electric. Uh, it could just be an air gun, but electric, I feel like is taking over. And this half inch Milwaukee, you guys saw in my last video, it's actually going for a lot cheaper than like a snap-on air gun. So definitely, definitely a must-have half-inch impact. Coming over here, we got a hose clamp plier. This one I wouldn't say you really need at first. It just makes your life a lot easier if you can't reach whatever hose you're trying to get to to undo it, like radiator hose. This one's really nice. I mean, of course, I use pliers for the longest, but these are really nice if you can get your hands on a set of them voltmeter you'll be using i mean starting off they probably won't be giving you much electrical diagnosis but it's still something you're going to need and it's considered like an essential in your tool artillery these back probe kits for when you start doing back probing and checking wires very nice to not damage the connectors or the pins they're super skinny the back probe really nice get a good voltage reading check resistance whatever you're doing and right here, because this thing wouldn't fit in here, big pry bar. Recommend getting yourself a nice set of pry bars. Really helpful. 
Also, I almost forgot this. I call it the transmission extension. It's a long half inch to three eighths extension. Anytime you're doing a rear wheel drive transmission, bell housing bolts are gonna be pretty far up. This one's really nice to get those top bolts out when you can't reach them. So yeah, I think that sums it up for the top drawer. Let's start moving down. Wrenches, uh, size 8, 10, 12, 14, 17, 19, a must. If you can get lucky, I'd recommend getting a set of gear wrenches. These make life a lot easier. Those hard to reach spaces where you can't quite fit like a ratchet and a socket in, you can just shove the gear wrench on, use it like a ratchet. For the big wrenches, I actually for the longest time didn't really have big wrenches. I would just use my adjustable crescent wrench, but these big wrenches come in handy too. Size 21, 22, kind of like sizes you're gonna need when working for a Toyota. Again, this is coming from a Toyota dealership tech, so this is not to work on all types of vehicles, but strictly if you are at Toyota. Now going down here, we have the power tools. Like I said, just the essentials. Highly recommend a nice 3.8 impact gun. It's gonna be one of your go-to guns. Definitely something I would recommend. Yeah, I will say that, but a screw gun is nice. A lot of dashes interior have uh, Phillips screwdrivers and Phillips screws. So this will really make life easier. Help you make more hours, get jobs done a lot faster. Nice air ratchet, it's pretty nice to have. Uh, working on the side, a lot of Toyotas, like I said, front wheel drive, so the timing covers are usually sandwiched in between the frame. So it's nice to shove this in there versus using a hand tool and taking forever. As you notice, these are all 3 8 and half inch. Um, when you're starting off, quarter inches are very nice to have, but it's not something you really need. I worked as a flat rate tech on the line for I wanna say about two years before I actually ended up buying quarter inch, and that was when I went to BMW and spaces were a lot tighter, so I started going more quarter inch, but now using them at Toyota, it does make jobs a lot easier, especially those tight spaces, but not a necessity. So going down to the next drawer, this is basically my plier drawer. I recommend having an assortment of needle nose pliers, set of dykes, a set of electrical wire strippers and crimpers. This is uh, flush cut pliers. This is actually from my vape rebuilding kit, but ends up working really nice for cutting zip ties really flush. Needle nose pliers, adjustable pliers, crescent wrench, I really use these a lot when doing alignments. Just set the, set the toe and let it go. Adjust those tie rods with that. Doesn't matter if you run into a different size, you can just adjust it really quick. So just a nice assortment of pliers, I would say is definitely crucial to have. A couple picks. Another mid-size pry bar. And a serpentine belt tool. This is really nice because you can put any size socket on there, so getting into those tight little areas, trying to crack that serpentine belt, works out pretty nice with this thing. Very long, gives you a lot of leverage. I think I missed this drawer. This drawer is just oil filter sockets, um, stuff like that. You should kind of already have these if you're looking into becoming a line tech. Usually Toyota tech store as a lube rack. You guys probably know that. Now at the bottom, we got more of the heavy duty stuff, a mallet, a big ass hammer, and a baby ass hammer. Very nice to have. Brake caliper spreader. You're gonna be doing a lot of brakes starting off at Toyota. Definitely recommend one of these. If you don't wanna buy this one, you can always just get a giant set of adjustable, adjustable wrench. And this one can retract the pistons into the calipers just fine. I see a lot of people doing that. Wire wheel, doing oil pans, timing cover reseals. You're gonna be have to clean up the old silicone that's dried up on there, so. Definitely recommend one of these. I uh, don't recommend a wire wheel from Harbor Freight though. The actual wheel itself, as you guys can see, this one got really shredded up and I was like a day of use doing one of those. So yeah, things not to buy at Harbor Freight, wire wheels, who would have known? Chain whip, pretty nice to have. 
1940s, uh, say the engine's not out of a car, like a crank pulley, and you're trying to crack that bolt loose, they're going to be on there hella tight, so chain whip's nice to just hold the pulley in place while you break the bolt loose. Uh, air hammer, very nice tool to have, uh, especially if you're going to be doing these new recalls. I'm not going to say which one, but this tool will be your best friend. And a cargo strap, or a ratchet strap. I don't know why I keep calling it cargo strap, but this thing's really nice. Say you're working uh, underneath the vehicle, doing a transmission or something. You gotta pull the steering knuckle out of the way to like pull an axle out, or just give you more clearance. This thing's really nice. Just wrap it around, attach it to the lift, and just pull that arm out, pull the shock out, give you some clearance to do whatever you're doing. So I believe that sums it up for the basics. Uh, I honestly think you can do like majority of jobs at the Toyota dealership with just the tools alone that I showed you in this toolbox. Tool cart, I actually work out of this tool cart pretty much all day. The only time I come to my box is like for something random like a torque wrench or something or a coolant pressure tester, you know, stuff that you're not necessarily using every day. So that's why I say a nice little tool cart is excellent when starting off. So now that we got the kind of basics down, uh, let's go over to the big box. Show you guys some of the tools that are very nice to have and will make you make that money. So coolant pressure tester, definitely pretty nice. Um, a lot of times you're gonna have cars coming in with coolant leaks. You might not know where it is, you might not see it immediately, or it might be a slow leak. So it's nice to have a coolant pressure tester help you find exactly where the coolant leak is coming from. Uh, over here we have the quarter inch stuff. Like I said, you don't really need quarter inch, but it is very nice to have and fits in a lot more spaces than the 3 8 stuff will fit. But have the quarter inch impact, quarter inch electric ratchet, quarter inch socket, same thing, uh, set size 8, 10, 12, 14. Usually you're not going to use uh, any bigger than that on a quarter inch quarter inch extensions. Uh, these are kind of some different ratchets, or this is just a quarter inch baby ratchet, but this is a cool quarter inch ratchet with a 3 8 head. I actually don't use this too much. I use this at BMW for one of the recalls, but yeah, it's kind of cool. E-torque sockets. This you're rarely going to use at Toyota. The only time you're going to use it, probably an E8 and an E10 to remove exhaust studs or any kind of stud, like the studs for the AC compressors. But definitely something you don't need right away when starting off. Jumper box, a lot of shops supply technicians with the jumper box, but it is nice to have your own. Not only for at work, it's nice to take home, just have it on you, nice jumper box. Torque wrenches, reason I left these over here and things you don't necessarily need when starting off is because I feel when you're first starting off, you're not gonna be getting any heavy engine work, and stuff where you're gonna really need to be torquing a lot of things. So I mean, it is nice to have torque wrenches, but they are kind of expensive depending on what brand you go with. So it's not something you really need to spend your money on as soon as you get started. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Up here I just got some more lights. Uh, you're gonna find that lights make it easier to see. I'm sure a lot of you guys knew that, but I kind of just love having different lights. Uh, you'll forget to charge your lights sometimes, uh, different situations where you can't really stick the light where you're trying to, trying to see. It's nice to have different variables, variations when doing different jobs. Really do recommend the under hood light. Um, just mount that thing under the hood. It gives you plenty of light while you're working on a vehicle. And also you can use this one inside of cars. So say you're like working in the back seats or doing a dash. I like to like put this across the, the roof of the car on the inside and it just lights up the whole interior of the car. And it's really nice. So that pretty much sums it up for this video. Um, like I said, these are kind of just tools to, once you're getting your foot in the door, start building your tool collection. I just kind of wanted to point the newcomers in the right direction on tools they need because when I was going to Citrus College, I had the Snap-on student discount and I bought a lot of tools not that much, but I bought a lot of sets, like big sets, and you really don't need like the whole set. So I wanted to kind of like pinpoint the things you're actually going to use in the line so you can actually just buy those and not get ripped off and have all these tools you don't use because the thing with sets is they look nice and they come with all the socket sizes and everything, but you end up using like one or two, half the sockets, half the bits. 
And again, when you are starting off on the line, usually the way it works is you're going from the loop rack and you're gonna shadow like a master tech or a team leader, shop foreman, some, something like that. So you'll be working with them and you'll see what tools they're using and I'm sure they'll give you advice too. And one thing too to remember is you're probably never gonna stop buying tools. I have a lot of tools. Some people have way more tools than me and I'm still constantly buying tools. I'll lose tools, I'll see something cool that comes out and I wanna upgrade my tools, just stuff like that. So another thing to think about, but I think that sums up this video. Let me know how I did. Let me know if this video was helpful for you. Uh, if so, maybe share it with a friend, fellow colleague, classmate, anything. Anything really helps grow the channel. So that's it for this episode, guys. Catch you guys later.